वेलकम थैंक यू हैंड्स एंड गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन so uh and here is my uh, big congratulations and big applause uh for the entire KMD to be hosting this year's uh, Steam 21 as the physical event <laughs> actually uh this is my second visit to Denmark the first one being the uh been to uh the city of Aarhus uh, that i visited in the year of uh 2019 it was actually June well and copenhagen it's very interesting copenhagen was my last schedule that i had to cancel i was supposed to attend some smart uh, smart city event there so i booked a hotel in copenhagen but then there was a covid <laughs> outbreak so just like all the other physical meetings that event it's, itself had to be cancelled yeah okay and earlier this year uh, we started some business discussion with hans and his team and suddenly in june hans invited me to be the speaker in this steam 21 so i said to myself wow i'm very excited i can visit copenhagen which i had to uh, give up last year so what copenhagen means to me is the both the shutdown and reopening my internal uh, international travel <laughs> so denmark to uh general japanese is famous for fairy tales little mermaid statue and lego we should not forget that uh when i was a kid i enjoyed playing lego and now my grandchildren are playing lego i would say uh, most of all uh, japanese families have lego but of course in the recent several years particularly to the policy makers in the government and the business leaders uh denmark is very famous for being the top runner in the world to be the uh, top runner of digitalization digitalized services particularly in the public service domain uh whereas the japanese are somewhat catching up position so for this reason there are now a lot of white papers and uh, research documents that are also written in japanese that report how your nation has implemented and using digitalized services Yes, papers are okay, but just illustrate elements piece by piece. Instead, I always enjoy traveling to meet with the people, talk to people, to have the real understanding, understanding of the reality, reality that are making the things moving forward, and also the reality of how you work together. So, uh, for this reason, I'm very much forward to talking to you all during today a steam so sustainable technology is all about today steam and this is a super exciting theme because it is perfectly in alignment with <coughs> the hope effort and commitment of NEC so i think uh, you already know NEC so i shouldn't bore you too much but n of NEC stands for the japanese word Nippon meaning the country of Japan but actually NEC was the first company in Japan that was that was born as a joint venture with foreign capital it was co-founded by the western electric company 122 years ago the founder Kunihiro Iwadare uh, was a guy who formerly spent some years in the United States working in the team of Thomas Edison therefore the spirit of technical startup the spirit of international collaboration have all been the uh <coughs> business culture of NEC so uh, what about technology development NEC has a global network of research and innovation centers all over the world why do we do that because we wanted to leverage region specific technical competency competency as well as the region specific innovation mechanism and its background of course we have one in europe uh, located in heidelberg germany and internally within nec our heidelberg colleagues are showing the leading practice on uh, uh, multi stakeholder open innovation and standardization driven global harmonization 
reflecting the very unique culture, innovation culture of Europe. <coughs> and in 2019, KMD and NEC started to work together. And I believe Denmark and Japan are <coughs> the two nations that are climbing the same mountain of sustainability. Uh, definitely the Denmark is climbing somewhat ahead, but uh, these two nations are headed to the same goal, I believe. How is NEC working uh, to develop uh, the new technology uh, towards sustainability? We continue inventing and we continue learning from the real world problems. Now, let me share some examples. Uh, these are smartphone cases for protection. Looking fancy? So this pattern is actually a traditional Japanese art called urushi lacquering. And the research team in NEC have been working on bioplastic material, uh, which is a recyclable plastic made from plants. Yes, they were right. The plastic weight has become a big problem now. But why did it take as many as 30 years? Actually, they already came up with the <coughs> bioplastic material, which is safe enough and manufacturing feasible already in 1990s. But they still decided to pivot when the world became aware that invention of new plant-based material should not compete with the global food supply problem. So the material now we fabricate is called non-edible bioplastic made from uh, material like a straw or corn kernels, corn cores. But later they faced another challenge, a user challenge. That is, that people will not immediately jump onto a new material just because it is environment friendly. So they worked hard again uh, <coughs> to come up with a real high quality for the biomaterial and they've been able to demonstrate that the bio uh, <coughs> bioplastic is actually capable of reproducing this uh, artistic deep black color and the ultimate fine patterning uh, that is required for urushi lacquering. And actually, the Japan, Japan's a professional art master of urushi lacquering certified this bioplastic material to be called urushi black. Now, communication is one of the major business domains of NEC. And what do you think this 84 is? Today, 84% of the total internet traffic is going through the submarine optical fibers connecting continent to continent, region to region. But Japan is using submarine fiber also for another purpose, which has something to do with this number, 10,000. This is actually the number of earthquakes that occurred in Japan in the year of 2011, the year when the tragic Tohoku disaster hit Japan. The entire region of Japan is under the constant threat of earthquakes and tsunami and huge one break up almost every year. So what I said as another purpose is actually <coughs> earthquake and tsunami. Our nation has installed what's called S-net <coughs> uh, in the ocean, the bottom of the ocean, for giving early alerts of uh, earthquakes soon after Japan was hit by tragic Tohoku disaster. And this S-net is made of sensing units interconnected with optical fibers. And it is not just, just for sensing the big and the disastrous earthquakes, but also S-net is constantly monitoring small earthquake and also small land displacement <coughs> to be provided to the scientists who, who are working uh, to be ab able to become, uh, to be able to uh, predict more accurate future disasters. And now we are also delivering the similar system to Taiwan, to install a similar system. And uh, as Taiwan is also facing the same disaster threat. But NEC's geek researchers go even further, leveraging the basic science of fiber materials. Now, even without sensing unit, sensing machine, 
optical fiber itself tells us detailed characteristics of mechanical uh, vibrations or uh, deformations taking, uh, uh, taking place by monitoring the light backscattering. So optical fibers now installed and used for communication in cities or along streets can also tell us if there is any uh, degradation in the object that fiber is attached to. And analyzing the vibrational properties of such material, uh, such prop uh, backscatter light using modern AI technology can tell us if there is any degradation taking place in, for instance, poles, bridges, and tunnels. Japanese government right now sets a regulation how to assess the how to uh, maintain the social infrastructures. The regulation is to use hammering sound and some professional guys listen to it to judge if there is degradation. But now the fiber sensing can tell us if there is any internal voids or some fragility growing up. You know, Japan is the aging society and we foresee a serious shortage in such skilled personnel maintaining the safe community infrastructure. So I believe that uh, such optical fiber sensing will be an alternative solution to address this safety issue and also the workforce issue. Okay, what do you think this big number this time, uh, 280 million? And it not, not only works under the ocean but also in space. Exploration satellite named Hayabusa, a Japanese word meaning falcon, in Japan's uh, uh, scientific deep space mission, it traveled to the asteroid called Ryugu and took the sample from it and brought it back. It traveled and reached the asteroid, which is far away at a distance of 280 million kilometers from the Earth, which is almost twice the distance between the Sun and the Earth, or more than 700 times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. NEC put its ultimate expertise and effort to deliver the deep space communication and autonomous aviation control system for Hayabusa. The Hayabusa's mission, there were two, uh, one, the first one from the 2003 to 2010, and the second project called the Hayabusa 2 was from 2014 to 2020. This video shows Hayabusa 2 touching down on the target asteroid. Ryugu, and the target area had a diameter of only seven meter, and the actual hitting point was only 60 centimeter off from the original se target center location. And you know, Hayabusa 2 went so far away from the Earth, so it took something like 15 to 20 minutes for any instruction sent from the Earth to reach the satellite. In other words, the video stream that the guys on the Earth watching is something that already happened, took place 15 or 20 minutes ago. So there was a whole bunch of communication, aviation control, and autonomous attitude control um, that were necessary to make this project successful. And Hayabusa project was a big success, and we're expecting the scientists to analyze these samples to unveil the history of solar system planets and will give invaluable hints also to the Earth's climate change issue. But it is not just for science. NEC's cutting edge technology in satellite flight control and aviation traffic management will also become the enabler of new smart city solution, namely air mobility. SkyDrive is a Japanese startup and last year they demonstrated uh, an experimental manned <coughs> air mobility vehicle uh, as one of the few successful players in the world. And they have the ambition to deliver air taxi service by the year 2025 when uh, Osaka city, uh, Japanese city, is hosting the World Expo in that year. And we are working together with SkyDrive with NEC's aviation traffic control technology. And today, Flight control of airplanes are managed by officials working in a toll tower in airport. 
something that you see as heroes in movies, right? But as soon as we start to have this whole bunch of flying vehicles everywhere, um, then the uh, aviation management system should become something different, more highly automated framework to be able to control all of them in a safe manner. So it will be NEC's long expertise will work right in aviation traffic management, very likely to be coupled with modern AI technology. And this will play a crucial role in providing the safety and also the social acceptance of air mobility. So, <clears throat> and this is a company working on ICT business, but our technologies are indeed making uh, new things in the real world possible. And it's where people <clears throat> can invade new technologies by looking at the real world problem and to understand how to tackle these problems. Along with history of NEC, the problem to be solved changed over decades, and so has the technology paradigm. But NEC has <coughs> a, uh, a persistent passion in driving technology R&D, and it is from the genealogy of our techni <coughs> technical expertise that makes the Swiss spotted connection between emerging problems and a, uh, a technology seized for new solutions. So, I'm starting to talk about Society 5.0, but at this moment, let us think, what should be the sustainability, when I talk, speak this word, when we think about society? As we all know, the environmental sustainability is a globally shared challenge. But each region must also come up with other aspects of sustainability. Business and executing resources is another important uh, aspect. A community has to be backed by a solid economic momentum. Community here, in other words, has to generate money and attract people for any new thing to happen. At the same time, citizens' well-being and equity is particularly important, particularly for Europe and Japan. Uh, if the business is uh, putting too much focus on making competitions and winner takes all, the society will be filled with gaps and inequalities, which constitutes the source of increasing uh, instability and fragility. In fact, in Japan, we Japanese have a business philosophy called Sampoyoshi. This means three-way satisfaction. As a business sustainability principle, the su satisfaction for seller, buyer, and community. So what this philosophy encourages business owner is to harmonize profit making and community contribution. And this philosophy has been there since mid 18th century, even before the modern democratic social system was established in Japan, or 250 years ago, before the modern concept of stakeholder capitalism became popular. <clears throat> so um, there was Industry 4.0 declared by G uh, German government in 2011. And it was in January 2016 that Japanese government announced the vision of Society 5.0. Society 5.0 tries to address the uh, <clears throat> social issues, at the same time stimulate economic growth, leveraging digital technologies, digital innovations. Altogether, what's aimed at is to transform the nation advanced in challenges into the nation advanced in solving challenges. But why was such a vision born in Japan? Let us look back at the time when the Japanese government started early phase discussion on its uh, next innovation agenda, sometime around 2014. At that time, Japan was still in the recovery phase from the tragic Tohoku earthquake and Fukushima crisis. Japan was suffering from the economic downturn followed, that followed a Riemann shock. Meanwhile, there was a good news, the hype of IoT and AI, and the idea of digital transformation. So it's a very natural consequence, right, that the government came up with the goal of achieving both sustainable and resilient community, society, and economic vitalization using digital technologies. 
But what was groundbreaking was <clears throat> the council member at the time decided to move into a new innovative policy formulation process. Uh, Professor Yuko Harayama, who was one of the council members later, speaks in her TED talk that the council members decided to work upon a new approach, uh, saying goodbye to the more familiar and traditional formulation process. They decided to say no to the technology first approach, no to the economy first approach, no to the expert first approach that delegates power to technocrats. Instead, the council came up with the guiding principles, three guiding principles, human-centric approach, openness, sustainability, and inclusivity. And the third one is experiment, experimentation-driven approach. And this is how they came up with the highest level goal of the Society 5.0 vision, that goes, human-centered, super smart society. Almost in the same period, my company, NEC, <coughs> had it said its corporate <coughs> commitment that turned out to be very much in alignment with the vision of Society 5.0. <coughs> in the year of 2013, NEC decided to make a major change in the business direction to become social value creation company, delivering safety, security, fairness, and efficiency. The statement is here on the screen, and you can see that NEC target has a strong focus of becoming the enabler of sustainability and people's well-being. <clears throat> and earlier this year, we had an internal intensive corporate-wide discussion on what we would like to achieve in the coming 10 years by working with our partners and our clients under the name of NEC 2030 Vision. We'll be working in the three spaces life, society, and environment. And actually, um, <laughs> there are several targets that we more specifically define. And in what follows, let me pick out some of them and uh, share our ongoing efforts. So I'll talk about one of the statements that goes, uh, sorry, uh, I'll talk about energy technology and business development to come up with the uh, digital solutions for a sustainable society and I uh, would like to start with this statement that goes uh, living harmoniously with the earth to secure the future and discuss how NEC is trying to tackle the global sustainability issue. The topic I'm putting up here is food loss. Today, one third of the food, total food produced is actually disposed. Uh, the number is 1.3 billion tons a year worldwide. And Japan, for the, in Japan, uh, the number is 6.1 million, which accounts for the 0.5% of the total food loss. And what surprises us is actually more than half of the food loss is what's called a business food loss. Business food loss is the amount of food lost before food reaches the end consumer who eats, actually, or throw away food. So we thought this is something or so, this is where we, NEC can make the society better, by working on supply-demand relationship, leveraging AI technologies. Indeed, NEC has been working with various business customers by providing a, uh, AI solutions in making a demand forecast to optimize customers' business decisions. We've been doing that for almost nine years. But three years ago, in 2018, we started a new initiative called Supply Demand Optimization Platform. Instead of just uh, reusing the data stored, owned in each company, we started thinking about using data coming from the business in other domains along the food supply chain. So in our uh, early phase experimentation, where instead of using the uh, data owned by manufacturing company to predict the demand for the com uh, manufacturing company's demand for the future. We added the data supplied from the retail company to be added for this prediction. And this experiment ended up with an 18% enhancement in the demand prediction accuracy. By working like, uh, in a such a collaborative way, 
will be able to reduce the uh, business food loss. But the contribution to the sustainability will not just about the amount of food disposed. There should be also the reduction of excess energy consumed in, uh, in during the process of manufacturing and also transport. And so will be the case for carbon dioxide emission. Of course, we'll be also able to make a better uh, planning of the workforce needed. So actually, I'm talking about some more into the uh, specific AI technology used in this supply demand forecast in the Society 5.0 track later. Now, the technology is called a heterogeneous mixture learning, which is a white box AI, or explainable, or interpretable AI. AI like deep learning is very useful, for instance, in doing uh, autonomous car driving. In such a case, uh, the AI is required to make an immediate identification of dangerous situation and, set, uh, and makes a pres prescription, for instance, like braking or turning to the left or right. And in such a simple problem, the AI, what required for AI is the overwhelming efficiency. So AI should be with the speed and with a high accuracy. And very often, such capability is implemented as automated decision making, simply because the goal is simple. But let us think about a situation when an AI is supposed to give advice to a business manager, such as CEO. If a you know, clever AI advises the uh, CEO that your company should decrease the number of salespeople by 30% and increase the R&D people by 30%. Manager has to know why, because he has to explain to the employees and also to the shareholders why such a high level, level and impactful decision has to be made. And this is where white box AI is useful and needed. Such types of AI approaches you know, uh, advantageous in making advanced suggestions to humans where very often the problem has more than one unique goal. So living harmonious li uh, harmoniously with life actually requires a massive collaboration with business players. And the important catalyst here, I believe, is a set of solutions that address, of course, the sustainability issue, but at the same time, brings the business, and business benefit and business resiliency to the private sector businesses. Next, I'm talking about work style. Uh, creating sustainable societies by shaping new industries and work style. Again, Japan is the aging society. And uh, seeing this challenge, it's important to improve the women's employment rights. It is indeed improving, but only recently. Of course, you may laugh, because Denmark no longer sees such a problem. But this is a reality in Japan, and we have to think about it. And to tackle this problem, providing enough capacity of nursery schools for child-raising generation is, of course, very important and crucial factor. But it is not just about such a statistics way of thinking. Every citizen should enjoy one's life and make one, one's life fulfilling by working, thereby contributing to uh, community, unleashing his or her passion, skills, and expertise. This lady is Ms. Michiko Kimura, um, who is a director of Clara University located very close to Kyoto. After spending 30 years working as the nursery teacher, she finds that there are so many nursery teachers who, after making the maternity leave, would not come back, come back again to work. Actually, government assessments reveal that 48% of the, those who have the official nursery teacher certificate or license are actually not working, becoming the potential or hidden nursery teachers. It's uh, 750,000, uh, it's a big number. So Kimura-san is a very passionate and entrepreneurial person. And she, when she became the director of Clara Nursery School, she began to think about how to innovate the workplace better or the working environment for nursery teachers better after hearing 
the voices of such potential nursery teachers. She started to change the system, introducing the uh, part-time working uh, system for child-raising nursery teachers instead of existing full-time. And at the same time, she started thinking about using digital technologies to improve the working um, environment. So she comes into contact with NEC and starts a discussion how to improve the work style in nursery school. NEC proposed an experimentation to assess nursery teachers' sentiment, how they're feeling happy or sad or angry or, or stressful on the stream of tasks at the nursery school. <coughs> and uh, Kimura-san's exp expectation was that not only becoming able to improve the working environment, she wanted to prove that nursery care is indeed an enjoyable job for nursery teachers. So she decides to move forward. The sentiment analysis uses a wearable device that measures heartbeat rate. Now, there's a small fluctuation in the heartbeat cycle that reflects the status of autonomic nerves. And from this information, it's possible to assess if a person is feeling happy, sad, or relaxed, or stressful. Uh, this picture is actually a schematized picture uh, made out of the uh, raw data taken from several nursery teachers. And uh, they found, uh, the people found that uh, nursery teachers are actually feeling rather stressful after lunch. What is this time? Kids are taking naps. And this time is actually uh, the period when nursery teachers have to work on paperwork. So it showed they're feeling stressful. And also at the time when they're taking kids to uh, playground parks through the downtown streets. On the contrary, uh, we found that nursery teachers are feeling happy after arriving at the playing destination, or when they are leading around aloud uh, picture books to kid children. So Kimura-san became very happy after finding that the nursery teachers are indeed enjoying the time when they are interacting with kid kids, which is a core part of the nursery. Uh, nursery work. So, shortage of nursery teachers is a nationwide problem, and the collaboration network with Kimura-san is now expanding to nursery schools in other regions and also to munic municipalities. Uh, in Japan, many municipalities are actually run, running uh, nursery schools. Meanwhile, NEC is providing the sentiment analysis also to other types of work style innovation, including new higher education office renovation design, employees' mental health, uh, for a variety of business sectors. OK, what are like people's daily lives? The percentage of number of people who are 65 old or higher is called aging rate. And Japan became uh, number one in the aging rate already at the beginning of this century, and has been so for these 20 years. And this is not necessarily a negative fact, because it indicates that uh, there is a well-established and well-operating uh, healthcare system, including the uh, health, uh, public health insurance. You never know what this NNK and PPK means, because these are Japanese. NNK means nen nen korori, meaning sleep, sleep, fall down. And this fall down means die. So <laughs> this means that old people spending rather long period in hospital before passing away. Uh, this is not an official statement, but we Japanese are becoming uh, very much aware of the importance of pin pin korori, which is active, active, and die. So what it means is that uh, we are becoming more aware of the importance of healthy life expectancy rather than life expectancy. In the global statistics, Japan is actually ranked number one already in the healthy life expectancy. But as more and more people are entering the elderly generation, it is important to bring further innovation on how, to, uh, how people can maintain their health before they really need, uh, start to need to go to or stay in hospital. One recent example I want to share with you is a new service business that NEC started 
branded as Arrow a service that NEC uh, is now partnering with a wellness service company uh, called Think Technologies. What NEC provides here is a gait analysis. It analyzes the details of how you walk. And uh, what we use is this tiny sensor embedded in insole of shoe, uh, whose size is quite similar to the SD card. So uh, what this <coughs> uh, foot motion sensor detects uh, are the 3D trajectory of walking. It measures the uh, step width and the walking speed and the foot angle when it lands, and also something like uh, how your step laterally sways as you are. I'm, of course, exaggerating. Um, the Japanese medical experts often say that old people who start have a problem in walking tend to become uh, long-term recipients of nursing care. So uh, how you walk is actually a very good indicator that represents the quality of life. And it should be possible to maintain the sound way of walking if you want to stay healthy. If you have some, if you are not with a good balance in left and right, that might be an early indication of the future distortion taking place in your body. Right now, what's provided as analysis is rather a fundamental parameters of walking. But we are now developing the richer analysis capability for instance, to deliver the early indication of knee pain, and also the elderly frailty. And of course, we are doing also, the, in parallel, doing the fundamental research to further expand the analysis capability, uh, such as the falling down risk, or the early trace of disease developing in internal organs, as well as dementia. Uh, actually, we also, uh, developing new technologies based on this analysis, all for young people who are very conscious about beauty, like telling the advice to maintain a good figure or the good skin condition. Anyway, our innovation just started, and we, ha we, have, to, <laughs> we have the ambition to uh, make a more extensive and sweeter spotted contribution to the elderly people <laughs> for their health by encouraging them to more proactively take actions instead of immediately finding themselves uh, becoming uh, sick. But this, is, is not, this use case is not ju just about delivering the uplifting light to uh, citizens. Japan's facing a serious problem of ever-increasing government health expenditure, bringing a financial uh, questioning, big, bringing a big question against the uh, uh, the financial sustainability of the nation. So I hope such a uh, early phase healthcare or proactive healthcare will also be a solution to the government budget strategy. Okay? So I shared three stories. The first one was about <coughs> how to come up with the gl uh, global sustainability at the same time bringing business benefit or business resiliency. This, uh, th this is about the supply demand optimization. And the second, a work style innovation, was about bringing resiliency to the business operation, at the same time making every worker's life fulfilling. The third use case story about early healthcare, of course, is for people's well-being, who are the main actor of the community. And actually, these solutions all together in intersect in the same spatial coordinate called community. So this is where private sector business, citizen life, and public sector services become connected in a collaborative way. And so such a multifaceted sustainability of society zero is in fact highly coherent with how we envision and design smart cities. And therefore, I'm talking about smart cities as my final topic and focus my discussion on data that are becoming more and more available in the city as a new oil for the next generation. And this reality is attracting big attention all over the world. But we are entering a somewhat challenging situation. Do you know which data, owned by who, under your specific situation, at your specific time, is useful? 
Answering this question is becoming more and more difficult as the city gets flooded with uh, a <coughs> big amount, bigger amount of data. And this is where the idea of managing context information is becoming useful. Think about a temperature sensor just sending out flows of numbers, 26, 27, 30, 17 again, or telematic system of a bus just uh, <coughs> exporting uh, numbers, first street, third street, five street. Oh, we don't know what, uh, what these are. So uh, instead of handling these data in an arbitrary and random fashion, context information management tags meaning to various data, describing what is going on, where, <coughs> when, and why. And knowing such context information will make the digital services smarter. And this is exactly how Fireware was born in Europe, first as a big year project where the public sector invested more than 300 million euro. And afterwards, it became the market adoption ecosystem driven by a non-profit organization called Fiverr Foundation. Fiverr defines itself as the open source platform for smart digital future. And uh, it, its ecosystem is steadily growing these five years since the birth of the Fiverr Foundation. And NEC has all the time been the major contributor to the Fiverr technology right from the beginning of this EU project that started in 2011. And actually, the uh, standardization of its open standard API that took place even before that. I'll talk about this technology and uh, use cases, and also my colleague, Enno Kovac from NEC Laboratories Europe. He'll also deliver this topic later. But uh, in short, what, <coughs> what fire uh, brings is to push forward, is to break down the silo walls of data that exist today between service domains and between organizations. At this point, let us take a look at the short video produced by Fire Foundation telling what Fire technology brings us, okay? Information coming from multiple sources must be accessible in real time, creating a digital continuum. Breaking down boundaries between domains will enable the exchange of relevant data across multiple applications, avoiding the current silos of information. Fireware is driving the standards to make all this happen, unleashing the potential of real-time open data at a large scale. It simplifies IoT, allowing developers to merge IoT data with data from other relevant sources and get access to it using well-defined RESTful APIs, reducing both the time and cost of development for IoT-enabled smart solutions. Thanks to harmonized data models and APIs, developers are able to create applications that are truly interoperable. Real-time data exported in a city can be combined with data from vehicles acting as mobile sensors to enable new services and improve processes like predictive maintenance of fleets and roads. Okay, Fiverr was born in Europe, but it's going global in the last several years. And now more than 200 cities in more than three, uh, 30 countries are using Fireware. Japan is, of course, one of such countries. And NEC's global team, based in Europe, Japan, and also India, are working together with the cities in such regions and delivering uh, and supporting their smart city initiative with the interoperable data reuse, interoperable service, and the practice share to make their initiatives more and more fruitful and citizen-centric. Of course, the interoperable data exchange platform that can handle IoT and other type of data coming up from the community is just a technical foundation of smart cities. But I believe this is also the enabler of a multiple co-creation mechanism for the local governments, which is in a position to improve their public services after having the visualization capability. The growth of business ecosystem formation under the shared problem-solving approach for business sector. And of course, for the citizen better life or better quality of life, services should be delivered in a customized way after knowing each person's context. So this is indeed a small but foundational element of Society 5.0. 
where people and the business growth and the public services for sustainability and resiliency leverage each other. So what is the next step towards smart city, uh, society fabulous zero? It is to go beyond city boundaries and make services and data connected and federated. People commute from home to offices every day, go shopping, travel to countryside during the weekend without becoming aware that he or she is crossing city boundaries, right? <clears throat> so actually, uh, after having such an understanding, Japanese government has have been working on the smart city agenda to put focus on securing interoperabilities between the smart cities uh, initiative working in Japan. And actually, NEC was the leading coordinator of the government project that formulated the Japan smart city reference architecture last year. And of course, this reference architecture was designed to be harmonized with the world's uh, best practices on interoperability by referring to the uh, uh, standards, uh, major standards like open uh, standard API for Fiverr, as well as the, what's called a minimal interoperability mechanism <coughs> by, uh, given by the city network for the open and agile smart cities. Actually, this is where Denmark can bring very important lessons to Japan. Japanese leader, of course, as I pointed out, know that your nation is the world front runner of building the digitali digitalized services and also the data reuse infrastructure, particularly in the public sector. And NEC is very much proud to be working with KMD, which is a trusted company in this space and which is continuing to contribute to the Danish digital infrastructure. Furthermore, our collaboration, of course, means a lot to the ongoing effort of building Society 5.0 in Japan. Digital transformation of society is now a, a big topic. Every nation is looking toward this opportunity. But of course, each region and country has uh, different types of uh, culture and also social norms, political as well as business background. Under cir such a circumstances, how the digitalization will proceed or how the digital innovation will be adopted in society might somewhat differ. And in such a circumstance, Denmark as well as other nations in Europe and Japan share the common value of appreciating a citizen-centric approach in achieving sustainable societies and in, in the end, sustainable Earth. So I'm convinced that our collaboration will not just for all, the sake of our own uh, future societies, but should be uh, our democratic and multi-stakeholder driven principle will be something to achieve super smart society that should scale also to other regions on the globe. We are climbing the same mountain and we should climb together with our ambition of achieving this chain of sustainability by sharing and cultivating our own wisdom how to leverage digital technologies uh, to, by scaling the impact of our collaboration and innovation. Thank you very much. I, th I hope uh, the Society 5.0 rocked you. <laughs> and thank you very much and enjoy today's theme. Orchestrating a Brighter World, NEC.